Hey, it's Tyler with TJX Survival and Survival Dispatch. So the main reason I decided to get into a lot of this stuff was so that I could teach it to my kids. Today, I'm just gonna show you something that you can use to teach your kids to help keep them interested in the outdoors. So stick with me. This message is for you, Finnegan. So one of the viewers reached out in the comment section and uh, talked about his son Finnegan who he likes to take into the outdoors and do stuff with. Um, I basically commented back about these cattail dolls and I want to tell you a little bit about them and then I'm going to teach you how to make some of them. So this video I want specifically for parents, uh, scout leaders, whatever, grandparents, people that want to take and spend time with kids in the backcountry. Um, a lot of times, fire's cool, shelters are cool, you either run out of ideas, or you get to a point where you've kind of done all the survival stuff, you want to do something a little more entertaining. And no primitive society was able to sustain long durations of existence without some sort of teaching from parent to child, without some sort of belief, without some sort of ceremony. And keeping that in mind, I want to tell you a little bit of the story of the cattail doll. So I got this from one of the instructors at Rabbit Stick and she got this from Morris Kohansky. Morris Kohansky got this from his Polish uh, grandparents or ancestors who escaped post or pre, I'm not exactly sure, World War II um, to get away from a genocide. So it, it was a cultural item that they used to you know, parents gave to their kids to play with. You can whip these up in a few minutes out of a bunch of different items, uh, different things that are available. This one is made out of corn husks, okay? I, I went to the local Hispanic store and bought a bag of corn husks. These are used to wrap tamales and stuff. Um, that's what this one was made out of. If you're gonna do that, soak them first. Um, another thing you can do is I pulled an old corn husk off of some corn in a field local to us, and I've been dipping it in water. It will kind of work when it's dry, but not as well. And the original is a cattail doll. I made this one for my daughter last year. It's dried up and kind of shrunk and not functioning the way it needs to be. Um, these are the chunks of cattail that I grabbed from the local creek right here. When you go out to harvest cattail, um, pure green is just going to shrivel up and shrink and you're going to have this type of problem. Pure brown is going to wither away, gray is going to fall apart. So uh, the best time of the season is a late part of the season. You can either cut the green ones and let it sit in the sun for a day, just make sure you flip it over so it doesn't dry too fast on one side and not fast enough on the other. Or you can get, the, get them in this phase where they're partly green and partly brown. Cut it and then dry it. This is green that's been drying basically all winter in my garage. So it's rigid. All I would do is just drop that in the water and then it's usable again. Um, you don't have to do a ton of preparation. You can just go whip one up out of whatever leaves that you find in the back country and make it happen. Um, this is one that I made the day of. I, I was able to reverse wrap the belt. I was able to re reverse wrap the belt and reverse wrap the hair out of a uh, green cattail that I split. Made a little girl doll with a bonnet and some arms. The reverse wrap was a lot tighter, but like I say, this one's been sitting in the garage all winter long. So, this one being the first one I created, it was, it was dry uh, corn husks, husks that we put in water that I then reverse wrapped and it's still tight because the water makes it malleable and if you don't soak it for too long, maybe half an hour, 20 minutes before you're gonna start, then it, it'll be able to fold and then because the inside of it isn't wet or rotten, it's not gonna shrink. So the easy stuff, the most longest lasting stuff is gonna be corn husks, but again, like, doesn't matter. It's a doll that you made out of a corn husk. If it breaks or falls apart, make another one, right? Or it's like, it's like sticks in the forest. If you break one, you lose one. There's more, just like rocks. Kids don't understand this, but anyway. So let's get to the instruction how to create this. Um, I probably should have a towel right here. 
Meh, yeah, let's roll with it. So I'm just gonna take a chunk of the corn husks and there's different variations of this and you don't have to get super concerned about it. And the first thing we're gonna make is the head. So to make the head, I'm just gonna grab a piece of this and roll it up. Right, I can leave it flat, or I can fold it over, there's my head. Now I have to have something that'll hold it. We'll grab another chunk, not quite that big of a chunk. Okay, and I'm, all I'm gonna do is just grab that, and I'm actually gonna, I'm gonna rip this one in half. And I'm just gonna take that head that I've rolled up, and put that right around the top, kinda pull it down, and there's a head. Now once I've created this head, I can make it thicker by continuing to add a little more on this side, maybe. Pop another chunk off, add a little more on this side, pull it tight, and until eventually we just have some basic bulk. The last piece I'm gonna stick right over the top so that it looks correct, and I'm just gonna pull it tight right there so now that I've got my head. Now, once I've built a head, um, I can throw a couple arms on it, I can throw a couple legs on it, I can make it busty. And I'm using Morris Kohansky's words, you know, busty girls are fun, he says. Uh, so once, once we've got the head built and something to hold on to it, now we want to create the, the little arms that are going to come out here. To create the arms, we're just going to use actual primitive skills. And this is what's kind of cool about this is the act of teaching your kids how to make toys gives them legit primitive skills. So I'm going to take these two chunks of corn husk and I'm gonna do like I would have with dog bane. I'm gonna twist them around like that. And I'm gonna take my right hand and twist away and just keep twisting until I've got a little chunk that pops up and starts to wrap around itself, okay? Once I've got that, I'm gonna twist the top away and then the top towards. Twist the top away and then pull it towards. And I'm just gonna keep doing this until I've got a little bit of rope. You'll see it starts to create that little chunk of cordage. Now normally I would roll this down my leg really fast with dog bane or other natural cordage for fibers to create this quick. Um, I'm not going to do that now only because it's a flat thing that doesn't roll really well and because um, it's wet, right? So just like with normal cordage, once I've got a little chunk that's starting to get too long and one that's too short, I just add another piece in and wrap that around. Just keep rolling with it. And again, this is great practice for primitive cordage making, right? How to make natural cordage in case you need to make a pipe deadfall or trap or whatever, you know, need to spend the winter making netting for your whatever you got going on. Okay, so I don't need too much. I basically need an arm, right? I got an arm and a half here. I got two braids, however you want to look at that. And I can pull this up and then stuff it right inside of my little head right here, right? And if I have some extra length to it, I can even wrap it around and make it this side of the cordage. All right, so now I've got an arm on one side. So I'll make another arm real quick. All right, now I got two arms made. One's a little thicker than the other because, you know, it's a weird kid. Um, as far as measurements are concerned, the span from arm to arm is the same length as top to bottom. So if you want it to be size appropriate, right, you're going to want to make sure that you measure the arms about the same length and that you make them as wide. You make the wingspan the length of the height, unless you're weird like some swimmers I know of that are, have wings for arms. There's one arm, here's the other arm, they're kind of long arms, I'm going to shorten these up a little bit. 
There we go. Now you don't have to overthink this. There's not like an exact way you need to do this. Just get it in there, tie it some silly knot. You're gonna cover it up with the, the dress part anyway or the robe or you know maybe you're making a Jedi, I don't know. <laughs> with whatever you're gonna do, I'll wrap it around the back and tuck it down. Just make sure that it's gonna hold itself. Um, primitive cordage has a tendency not to do well with knots, but it does great with stuff like clove hitch. So whatever you're doing, just wrap it and tuck it instead of tying it into a full-blown legit knot. Now, if you're making a girl, you want a little bulk in the front there, right? You can either take another piece and roll it up, or just use the knot in my case right here that I'm just gonna tuck this last piece of uh, corn underneath. Okay, so now we got a head, two little arms, and if we're making a girl, we got some chest there. If we're making a boy, what you can do now is to reverse wrap two more, make a really long one, and then you got little feet hanging out the bottom. If you wanna make braids, you can stick some, stick it through the side of this head piece and pull it out the back, whatever you wanna do. So once we've got that far, we need to build the dress or the clothing around it. And the way that you're gonna do that is you're just gonna take a split piece. You're gonna put, oh, boobs fell out, let's fix that. Lost the girth. Okay, you're gonna take this piece right here, just put it over the shoulder, right? And if you have a lot of excess, you can balance it. And you're just gonna build it up with piece after piece, right? And now you start to see how we're creating the dress part. This part will be last. And then you make a little belt where the final piece stays. So that essentially is the upper part of the dress. So now if I need to make a little belt to hold it, I'm gonna set this down, something on it. Build another piece of cordage. See if I can get two of these guys. And again, I'm, I'm taking the two fat ends and I'm putting the two skinny ends together until they kind of match. And what that does is it gives me consistency in the diameter of the primitive cordage I'm creating. So it's not skinny to fat. Do my reverse wrap. And this is, that's just good, a good thing to do for any type of primitive cordage creation. Okay, made another piece of cordage real quick. I probably overkilled the size of what I actually need. Um, if you wrap this stuff with most natural cordage tight enough, it'll stay. Given that this is a big sheet of corn and wet, it'll probably come undone. So I'm gonna drop a, let um, me tighten this up real quick, and I am going to drop a knot right in the final end of it. On another note, it appears that the ideal amount of corn is one husk per doll so that might be a good measurement thing if you have a little group of people you want to be teaching so here's a quick we could be a robe i mean we could be making nuns or farm girls from the 1800s or jedis or whatever you want to do um, now before i add too much i need more lower body like it's thin right so i'm going to add some more pieces here until I can build up the girth a little more. Pull the rest of these sheets off. So add up a little more girth. Um, and then once I've got some body there really, I can start wrapping this around. And before I do that, I wanna take a piece or two up front like this so that it can have a little apron, right? So if I take these two pieces, hold that right like that, Tie it in the back. And then I'll just lay that piece down. Okay. Um, the very last piece, which is gonna be held down by that back sheet, is gonna be a bonnet. Like this could be a person, but if we wanna put a little bonnet on it, put a bonnet, put a bonnet on it. I need more dad jokes. Okay, what's brown and sticky? 
That's right, it's a stick. Okay, let's try another one. So, uh, what do you call a boomerang that doesn't come back to you? It's also a stick. <laughs> okay, all right, there is my little cattail doll. I'm calling it cattail doll because that's what Morris and his family called it. Uh, I made this one out of corn husks, as you can tell. And this one I've had for a couple of years now. It's actually the one that I learned on. It's the first one I ever made. And here's the one, looks like the little scarecrow or whatever, that I made to look like it. Now, just, just because I made it this way doesn't mean you have to rigidly adhere to what I'm doing here. Be creative, right? If I just grabbed another set of reverse wrap and run it through the back, I could have piggy tails hanging out in the back there. I could put little legs out the bottom. I can give them a stick and have them hold onto a broom. Make it into a little witch or something. Um, there's a ton of different things that you can do, only limited by your creativity. And because of that, it's an excellent task or thing that you can do with your kids, especially if you have a kid that isn't quite into the outdoors as much as you may want them to be just yet. I'm gonna tighten this back up. Something a little different and a little unorthodox, but something that's great for kids. I want to integrate skills that you can teach and do with your kids a little more because that's just the phase of life that I'm in currently and that's what I'm doing. We all spend all this time doing primitive survival and prepping and all this other type of stuff, homesteading, whatever's that we're doing. And we're preparing for something that may never happen. And if there's anything that we can do to strengthen family bonds, and still prepare for something that might never happen while passing knowledge from one generation to the next. I think that's kind of the goal of the ideal. So hopefully that's valuable to you, Finnegan. Go make you one of these. Send me a picture, I wanna see it. And uh, leave comments or suggestions down in the, the comment section of this video. Please share this one. I don't think anybody else has a, a video out like this or on this topic. Um, and if you want to see something, leave a comment below. All right, I'm done. Thanks for watching. I'm out.